Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. And uh, call your attention to the announcements here. Um, we'll be recognizing our graduates towards the end of worship service tonight, today. And uh, there are some needs for the Safe to Sleep House. You can look through that. Also, the bingo at Jordan Creek, they are looking for some uh, nice prizes to give, and so they're wondering about necklaces or stuffed animals, um, different things that could be donated as bingo prizes, and are uh, asking for those. And there is a uh, trip meeting following worship today for the youth gathering, so please plan to um, attend that if you're going to the youth gathering. And finally, our endowment fund. If you are thinking about a project or a need in which endowment funds may meet, uh, please get those applications in by no May 28th. Uh, one other thing, I think a couple weeks ago, someone spoke to you from call committee about the ministry site profile being completed and submitted, and I noticed out on the card table right out there when you walk out the door is the ministry site profile. So if you want to pick one up and read what it is that uh, candidates are looking at, you can pick those up. They're just right there. I, I have one yes. last announcement as well. Um, next Sunday for um, Mother's Day Sunday, warning all of you guys who need to celebrate moms, which is all of us. Um, we are having a, the youth are giving a uh, bake sale out there, so bring some money for that. We are not doing the flowers, which we've been doing the last couple years, so find your flowers elsewhere. But that bake sale will go to uh, the Tomashinga and the youth gathering as well. Please rise and sing. <laughs> Thank you. 
confessing our faith, we believe in God, the creator of all things, the source of all goodness and love. We believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, true God, yet true man. He was crucified, died, and was buried for our sin, that we might be free and know the joy of life. He was raised on the third day and ascended to heaven. He will come again in power and glory to judge both the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the power of God at work inside of us. We believe in the Church of God, the people of faith throughout the world. We believe that our sin is forgiven and that we will live together with God now and throughout eternity. Amen. Before I share the gospel, a, song, a reading from Psalm 98. Sing a new song to the Lord, who has done marvelous thing, whose right hand and holy arm have won the victory. O Lord, you have made known your victory. You have revealed your righteousness in the sight of the nations. You remember your steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice and sing. Sing to the Lord the, with the harp, with the harp and the voice of song, with trumpets and the sound of the thorn, horn. 
Shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who uh, dwell there. Let the rivers clap their hands and let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord who comes to judge the earth. The Lord will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. In a reading from John, the 15th chapter, Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. No one is greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. If, you, if I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing, but I have called you friends because I have made no in to you everything that I have heard from the Father. You did not choose me, but I choose you. I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please take this time to share the peace with one another. I invite the kids to come forward at this time for a children's message. So do any of you have pets? Yes. What kind of pets? Like a zoo at my house. You have a zoo? Yeah, because my, my brother's girlfriend bought, had, has to work at the school at Grass Row, which is a wolf school, and she Oh, cool. Those are fun. Beta fish. Yeah. They're cool. I have a girl named Beta and my dog. Oh, wow. And she has one not salt water. Okay. No salt water for beta fish. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Any others? You have a cat. You have two cats. And I have three dogs. Three dogs. Wow. Do you have? Eight cats and a dog. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I have some questions. Do you take care of your pets? Yes. What kind of stuff do you do to take care of your pets? Oh my goodness, and a mouse. Oof. <laughs> yeah. Um, you have to feed them. You have to kind of give them a little bit of TLC. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You have to and take care of them. Yeah. You have to pet them. Yeah. Them, but you can't hug Got to water them, right? Yeah, yeah make sure. Yeah. Oh, wow. And dogs can sometimes stand up and you can just hold their hands. Yep, that's your... true. So we get a lot of joy from our pets, don't we? I love, I love pets. Yeah. Well, thinking about pets made me think about an important lesson in our gospel today, and that is Jesus talks a lot about this word abide. Abide with me, he says. And he talks a lot about love in that text as well. And so I was wondering, what does abide mean? Anybody have an idea? Yeah. Um, it kind of means like, come with me, kind of like abide with me. So if they said, abide with me, I'm my bike or something like that. And they, they kind of mean like, hey, come with me. Like, come exactly. 
Exactly. It's to, um, well, there's, there's three parts to the meaning abide, at least according to the dictionary. <laughs> um, abide can mean to live in a place or live with someone. So we like abide with our parents, if you live with your parents or grandparents. It can mean to listen to or follow the rules, so abide by the rules, right? And then it can mean to stay with someone, to abide with me, to go with them, to go along with them. So, in understanding a little more deeply this idea of abiding with Jesus, I thought we'd look at how pets abide with us. Okay, so the first one is uh, living with us, living at our house, right? Yep, that's the third one, but we aren't there yet. Um, so, yeah, the, the, they live with us, right? They love us. And they love us, right. And then pets probably have rules that they need to, or we yeah, need to dogs. follow around them. Yeah? We need to dog living. Exactly. You don't want them digging. What's some other rules that you might have with the uh, pets? You can ride your bike. Like your, probably if you have a cat, uh, the cat might follow you. Yes, cats do do that. A friend of mine's cat will sit outside a house if she goes visits her neighbor and wait at the driveway until she comes out of the house and then follow her back home. Isn't that cute? I love that cat. Um, yeah, other rules, you know, fish need to stay in water. That'd be a good rule, <laughs> right? Um, don't, don't put the turtle on the table. Um, yeah, yeah, sometimes... But, you know, we try to keep those rules. Like, you probably have the dog on a leash. Um, yeah, cats need to use the litter box. Yeah. Yeah, make sure the cats go to the litter box when they go like Yeah, you don't want them anywhere sure else. You help the cats when they get stuck because they hurt help high pitch, and it's really annoying. Yeah. I haven't heard it, though. It's a never cat pet acts like they're wrong by because then they get all Oh, wrong. yeah, they don't, they don't like that. So, okay, so let's see. Oh, third part of abide is then a little more tricky, but you kind of said it with you got to love them and they love us, and that's this idea of staying with us, right? And our, our pets, they'll go with us for wherever we go. So they, they kind of do that, or like when you're feeling sick or something, the pet will come to you, and that's abiding with you. Oh my goodness, that sounds like a fun story. It is, it's a great one. So, okay, well in our story from the gospel, John, uh, Jesus says, abide with me. And so, kind of like how our pets, we um, live with Jesus. So Jesus lives with us in our hearts, right? Um, there's some rules for abiding with Jesus, like, Love your neighbor as yourself. That's a big rule. And then the third part is um, abiding is to go with. And so we try every day to go with what Jesus would do, right? And he says that if we do that, we will have joyful hearts. And so that's the promise we were given. If we abide with Jesus, Jesus abides with us. And um, so that can help us to live and listen to others more because we know God is live and listening to us also. Let's pray. Loving God, teach us to abide in your love, to live lives full of love, to listen to the needs of others, and to love and care for them no matter what. Thank you for abiding with us. No matter what. Amen. Go in peace. Have a seat. So when I was a kid, um, my cousins, they were all boys, 
and we would play superheroes. And uh, we would get pretty wild. We'd leap off the stairwells. We'd leap off t beds. A um, lot of bouncing and banging going on upstairs. I'm always amazed that none of our parents would check out what we were doing. <laughs> but we would play superheroes. My favorite was Wonder Woman, and I would defend the world with my big clanging bracelets that I took from my sister's bedroom. And I'd protect the world from villains like cats and dogs and the occasional pig. And I wonder, I think some of you may have played uh, with action figures or pretended to uh, be superheroes maybe when you were kids too or maybe not so long ago. Um, and we looked good and we felt powerful and, and we could be heroes and all the fears of the world could be conquered and it felt really great. But then what tends to happen as we um, get older and, and the world seems more real, more harsh, and our Wonder Woman and Batman capes become a little more tattered and threadbare. And some of you may have lost yours altogether or left them in a crumpled heap of disillusionment, or you accidentally dropped your cape in a dumpster. Or maybe you just packed it away nicely and neatly into your parents' attic along with other childhood dreams and fantasies. And maybe some of you never took your capes out at all to begin with. So you feel ordinary in our world, powerless sometimes in all its magnificence and risks of love and being truly alive, though something we want and we can have, tends to fill us with anxiety about actually getting and living out. The real world is a scary place to be a superhero and to exercise such superhero powers as living life fully and loving fully. It can be easier to forget our hero's calling and sing a song of silence. As I mentioned earlier in the announcements, the community of Messiah is in a time of change and transition, another phase in that process. You have posted your ministry site profile and await with baited anticipation of the candidates to be interviewed. And sooner than later, you will be engaging in a heavy decision of calling a new pastor. And this can bring up both anxiety as well as great excitement at the same time. And in the midst of all that change and little fears that come up, questions might rise, like, what's next? What's the right decision? What will change? What won't change? Well, in all of that, we, we hear the message again and again in Scripture that God has a plan, and it's a good plan, and we're like, yep, we know that, we know that and I'm still scared. And all that worrying isn't really helpful or useful in the journey. Nevertheless, in that worry, in that fear, there is a call to exercise some superhero powers. Namely, your ability to think creatively and effectively amid times of crisis, uncertainty, and complexity. So it's time to dig out those superhero capes and travel the hero's journey. And that journey begins with a song. 
or as Psalm 98 put it, sing a new song. Make a joyful noise to the Lord. All the earth break forth into joyous songs of praises. The Lord has made known his victory, and the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Psalm 98, it invites all of creation to celebrate, to celebrate God's power, and to do this not only with song, but with Loud clamoring. I love loud clamoring of musical instruments. It doesn't mean that they're getting it right necessarily. It's loud and clamorous. And it assures us celebrants that God will deliver us from oppression and judge all creation with equity. So in your hero's journey, you are called to sing this new song, and in doing so, you are also called to recognize that in all of your personal power and your strength and your prestige, there lies within each and every one of us our own kryptonite. And it may be made up of personal loss or a haunting past or just plain flaws. And the hero's journey is the second part. Yes, there's struggle, and there is this kryptonite. And yet, in all of this adversity, we build up a reserve of resilience and chutzpah and hope. And that virtue is our gift, our superpower. The empowerment that comes from being real, <laughs> being real about Strength and weakness. A sovereign God who lifts us up and judges with equity. There are teachers in our lives of this resilience. Mentors who mingle our passions and our pain and our limits with life's mysteries and magnificence. Mirrors who reflect our identity our identity of knowing that God empowers less than perfect people to do good things. And that's our identity. And it grants us hope, these mentors, these inspirations, these teachers of resilience. They give us hope that we have a purpose even in our own flawed ways and occasionally fear-filled, hurting lives. They help us accept the work of our own spiritual poverty. Okay, now, spiritual poverty does not sound like a superhuman strength, but it actually is. It's one of your superpowers. So besides just being real about our own flaws and having power and strength within that, we've got this spiritual poverty thing a Jesuit source describes it this way, self-acceptance about being a limited, created being. Self-acceptance is having made peace with one's past. Readiness to let the Holy Spirit pierce one's precious defenses. And acceptance of being ordinary. There is one of uh, two universal spiritual principles of the hero's journey. And that one of those two is hero's struggle. Heroes, it's not that you aren't ordinary, that you don't have defenses to be pierced, that you aren't limited, created beings. The hero refuses to let a struggle imprison their mind or their purpose, or their faithfulness. That's when the hero power, the hero's journey, steps forth. The hero struggle. Now, the other spiritual principle, there's a few others, but of the two I'm going to talk about today, of a hero's journey, is that it's okay to have a good day. Uh, 
Heroes can have good days. Some of the happiest, most playful people with the deepest belly laughs have experienced the deepest pains and loss in their lives. You don't have to play the martyr. We live in this world that's obsessed with work or that thin line that comes from living paycheck to paycheck between poverty and survival. And in that space, we have lost the precious gift of rest. So my fellow heroes, claim your superpower called Sabbath rest. Practice connecting with each other and God and the world. Make a decision today to sing a new song. And it's important, it's important for your spirit that you allow yourselves to have your exhale moments, whatever that is. It's that way of balancing the ebb and flow of living. So go fishing and golf and dance and run and paint and nap and game. Rest and renewal are key ingredients to the path of resilience, the path of the hero. Rest and renewal can also guard you from being enslaved to work. It's a kind of kryptonite. And all those technological distractions. Now, in hearing this, you may wonder, but what about the, the cool uh, saving the people thing about being superheroes? Well, yeah, <laughs> there are moments when life summons you to respond in a self-sacrificing way. That is part of being a hero. And if you think that self-giving requires some sort of spectacular human feat, then remember what you already know. What you already know from being on the receiving end of small acts of kindness, and how much those small acts of kindness mattered. That a tender glance or the lost art of uh, handwritten notes or a hug or some uh, sense of assurance, that, that kindness meant so much. Maybe it's making beauty, like the people who after... Uh, in New York after 9-11, dusted off their instruments and went out into the streets the day after on November 12th and played music for all the folks who needed that balm of Gilead for healing. So dust off your capes, dig through that box of childhood dreams, and claim your hero's calling in life. Get out of your heads that you have to be exceptional. The hero's journey. It's one of surrendering our fear and our anxiety and our worries to a higher universal power that's modeled to us through the hero's life of Jesus. And when we wonder, now what? What next? Are we doing the right thing? Is this the right decision? And your mind goes whirling around in that never-ending escapade of conflict and anxiety. Hear this. It's going to be okay. So sing a new song about that. Sing a new song, not the song of worry and fret, not the song of what used to be and why isn't it working now. Make a choice to sing a new song. For the Lord has done marvelous things, marvelous things with less than perfect people, limited created beings. Make peace with your past and sing a new song. 
And in that new song, well, here's the realities of a hero's journey. Your ordinariness will be pierced. I'm sorry. Your ordinariness will be called out. Your vulnerability will be pierced. And your defenses. And your playfulness will be required. Everyday heroes gather around. Have faith in your own voice. Because it's time to sing a new song. And accept that you'll have your own kryptonite to deal with it. So get real about it. Accept it. Use it. And with each stumbling and adversity that you face, build up a reserve of resilience. Look to the heroes, the mentors, who have modeled this before you. Resilience, chutzpah, hope. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Know that you are known by a creator who brings beauty out of chaos. A hero who responded to a call of sac sacrifice so that you may be free. And a guiding power who is with you and who's whispering in your ear, it's going to be okay. Amen. Please rise and sing as we share our tithes and offerings.
We pray for our church, for the wholeness of creation and all who are in need. Holy God, your voice calls us to worship. Where there is division and discord in the church, unite us in harmony. Where we lack direction, guide us, that we may sing a new song with all our voices, with our most unique voices and most traditional together. Creative God, your melodies formed the earth and all that's in it. We hear and receive this roar of the sea, the rhythmic clap of the rivers, the loud clamoring of the hills, praising you, knowing you are a good and equitable God. Holy One, you hear the moans and the groans. We lament and we sing our blues and we send them up to you that you may listen. Send us comfort. Help us build relationships that are rooted in justice and in peace. Oh God, serenade the estranged and all who suffer alone. Accompany high-functioning addicts, the frightened who have no one to turn to. Give rest to overworked caregivers and people who are living with schizophrenia. Today we pray especially for all those we name out loud or in our hearts. God, you are an eternal song. You call us to share gifts with each other, our superpowers in this hero's journey. And we thank you and praise you especially for our musicians, our vocalists, our choir directors, our hymn writers, our poets. Bless all who lead and all who sing in worship. Your goodness, it echoes throughout time, throughout the songs of the saints. And we thank you for all the mentors, for all those who have reflected your identity to us, who have given us this gift of a new song this gift of music. May the song that lives within us be sung clearly. We entrust all these prayers to you through the power of the Holy Spirit, knowing in the love and assured in the love of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to all to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it to all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant of my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Whenever we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we do so, remembering Christ died, Christ risen, and Christ shall come again. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. This meal of forgiveness is open for all to receive, so all are welcome to come forward and receive this meal. You may kneel or stand along the railings, and then either you will receive the bread, and then either the dark liquid, which is wine, or the light liquid, which is grape juice. And we do have gluten-free elements available. Just let your server know that you would need those. Come, let us eat.
invite you to please stand and receive the blessing. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. All of you sit down. And then I'd like those who are uh, graduates this year (laughs) to please stand. I won't make you come up here, but you can stand where you are. Any graduates here today? They were all at the early service. Oh, okay. Well, we will say a prayer for our graduates anyway. So join me in this prayer of loving thoughts towards all of our graduates. And you'll say, hear our prayer, O God, when I cue you. (laughs) Loving God, we pray for the wisdom to discern your call in our lives. Hear our prayer, O God. We pray for the wisdom to make healthy choices in the face of endless and confusing options. Hear our prayer, O God. We pray for the grace to redefine our relationships with our parents and our friends as our lives change. Hear our prayer, O God. We pray for the grace to form new relationships with new friends as we move forward from this place. We pray for the courage to swim against the current of society as we seek to follow where you lead us. We pray for the courage to take a stand with you for justice and peace in this world in this time. Hear our prayer, O God. Amen. I invite you to receive the benediction. You can stand again because you'll have to sing and stand anyway. So, <laughs> May God, who has brought us from death, fill our lives with great joy. May Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. <laughs>